Hello friends, uh, Ashton here. So it's quite a long time and uh, today I'm going to release a new project to the channel. So it's um, AppScript Project 99 and this is a project related to a personal time tracker but we are using a Google Calendar for the input of your time. All right. So as you can see here, this is going to be the application here we have this menu to launch the sidebar application and uh, you have an option here to send the report manually uh, in this menu, okay? So, uh, let me show you how to use this tool first and uh, you can launch this sidebar application just like I showed you here and uh, by default uh, it's going to go to your calendar, right? It's going to go to your calendar and uh, it's going to pull the the calendars which is created or you are the owner of the calendar and uh, it's going to pull a list of calendars here so by default they are not syncing uh, to the this event list here so what you can do you can turn this on okay uh, for the calendars you want to sync to this spreadsheet you can Turn the, uh, turn the calendar on and uh, so this is the first thing you need to do you need to select some calendars you want to use for for time tracking so in this way you can create multiple um, calendars and uh, if you are trying to use them for the time tracking and you can do that right and uh, for this session here you can automate some reports and if you want to send a weekly report, you can turn this on and uh, maybe monthly report, you can have this on too and even for a yearly report, you can do that and after all of this, let me get rid of my uh, profile here and uh, you can save the change and what this button here is going to do is going to create some triggers to automate all of this, all of this task, okay? So right now I have created a, a trigger to watch the changes uh, on this calendar. So if any events is updated or created in this calendar, it should pull the data and put it here in this event list. So if I open the calendar, so I already did some test here. Uh, maybe I pick another day and uh, I can just create a, maybe this is for YouTube, test A and uh, this is for the, uh, I can select some calendars here, right? And uh, for now we have the work and uh, Google Apps Script and if I save it, if everything goes well, so you will see here YouTube test A, so this is going to be the ID of the events and uh, we have some information here like the name of the calendar and uh, who created it and we have information here about the start and the end time so this is going to be very useful information uh, if we're trying to build some dashboards for uh, this time spent right so I also applied a formula here to calculate the days hours minutes and uh, you can do the reports uh, according to this raw data and you can build your own dashboard so this is not another topic and uh, I'm not very good at this part so you can use your imagination so and uh, if we have the data here and you can start to create your dashboard like this so right now I just create some simple charts it's basically generated by this this tool here uh, to basically grab some data we can use All right so this is basically the process you select some calendar and uh, it's going to create the trigger to, to, to watch your events for this calendar and it's going to push the events into uh, this spreadsheet. All right, so this is basically the process and let me show you some configurations. So we have a settings tab here. So first section here for this app and you can rename it. So this is basically this, this time tracker showed here for the name and also for this title and also this title uh, in this app bar, you can change it here, okay? And then we have this uh, uh, GID, so this is basically in the URL, you will see it here. 
And this is used to basically a, a way to uh, bind the spreadsheet or the tabs with this ID. Right, so for events, we have this ID here. Just in case you, uh, if we're doing this, we can rename this whatever we want. And uh, if this ID is, it can be found in this spreadsheet, it should be okay, right? Just in case if you create a new tab and you want, new, you want to sync the data to a new tab, and uh, which is not with this ID, so you can do the change here for this ID. And the same idea for the dashboards. Uh, this dashboard tab is going to be used for as a source for the report generation, okay? And this is about the IDs. And then we have a section here for the reports or email configuration here. So what we can do here, we can send the... Um, so this is also used, the email, email configuration is also used uh, for the weekly, monthly, yearly, uh, email notification. So I simplify the project a little bit because we can have this configuration in the sidebar of course but in the Google Sheet uh, we have a better way or easier way to do it. We can have a table like this so users can do some configuration very easily uh, here and uh, it save, save me a lot of time to, to redo uh, the code for this part but it's absolutely doable if you're interested you can try to something similar like this so you can uh, do more right and here what we can do so this is uh, so if it's a red it's end with a star so it's a required field and uh, we need to put the the title so you can use the formulas if you want to have a dynamic uh, title so maybe somewhere you have some text which is changed uh, frequently maybe every week you have a different a title so you can use the week number in the subject if you want right so you can use a formula to do that so just like a placeholder thing okay and then uh, the name of the sender so basically so right now I put some value here you can maybe your brand or something your company and so you can put it here if you want and then the recipient and you can have a comma separated email addresses and you also have the CC field and the BCC field. And then we have this body section here. So here we can use HTML, okay? And uh, also if you don't want, if you don't know how to use HTML, you can play, uh, play you can just, just input some plain text here, it's okay. And uh, the most important thing here is about a special uh, placeholder here called dashboards. So this is a uh, unique or special Placeholders is used by the script, and uh, this is where we place the charts. So in the dashboard right now we have three charts, right? And uh, if I put it here, that means I'm going to insert the three uh, charts into this email body, okay? So this is very interesting, and uh, it's very important. If you um, didn't put it here, it won't insert the charts from the dashboard when you send in the email. Okay, and uh, you can do a lot of stuff with HTML. Uh, so, and then you can select a layout, maybe some columns. So basically, if you have a lot of charts in this report, okay, so maybe you want to lay out them in the email by column. So maybe you want to have a two column layout, so like this, uh, chart by chart, like this, right? So I should create a bit more charts so we, I can explain this a little bit. So if I place a two column here, so that means in my email, I have column, uh, one column, basically I have two column of charts. So you will see here. And if you want to attach this dashboard as a PDF, you can do it, you can have this checked. And after this is checked, and you have some configuration for the PDF. If this is unchecked, so this all of these settings won't work because we're not attaching this as a PDF. I mean, for this dashboard, we can send it as a PDF. So let's have, have this checked. And you can define the attachment name if you want. All right. And you can change the size for the PDF. So maybe an A4 size or a letter size if you want. And uh, you can choose a portrait or landscape if you want. So I just put some configurations you can do here uh, a little bit easier or customizable for you to do that. So 
let's have a try. So if I'm trying to send report, I hope everything goes well. Okay, so it's, it's done. And if I go to my inbox here, I, I believe I got an email, but I think I need a while. Yeah, maybe a reload. Okay, so this is the email we just got from uh, from this test, right? And by two column, two columns here. So I mean uh, column for charts because we have this kind of layout. So we have two columns. So that's why we have image here, image here. So if we have four, we should have one here. So that's a, that's, a, that's a, what these two columns doing here for the layout. So I think uh, one to three is enough because I don't think we're going to put a lot, a lot of columns in the email body, right? And here in the attachment, so this is like a print of this dashboard. So you will see, we have, at the back end, you will see we have some data for these charts, right? And uh, if you don't want to see them, you can just uh, change the color to, to white. So it's basically the same. <laughs> if you have a different background, so the background color and the phone color, they're the same. So it's not visible uh, like this. And uh, here you can do a lot. And here I'm using some query formulas to do some pivot things. So you can, uh, basically you can grab some data or you can use pivot table to do that, to do that of course, no problem. So you can use your imagination and uh, with this raw data, so you basically need to build your own report, maybe weekly report or monthly report, yearly report, whatever report you want to build and put it here in this dashboard and it's going to send it as a email and uh, if you want to attach it as a PDF, you can do that uh, by check this in the in the settings, right? So this is basically about this tool. I think, let me think if anything else is missing or... Yeah, I think uh, I, I basically uh, leave some Flexibility, so you can do, you can do some customization for the report, and uh, you need to do this part for the dashboard uh, because I don't think I, I understand the requirement. Maybe for some person, they just want to see something different, and uh, you can basically have the data, and you can play with, around with it, and uh, maybe you can define some categories in the title because we are fudging the title, right? We are fetching the title uh, and put it here. So maybe you can put some important categories in this title. So you can, uh, by using this title, you can create some different report. And also you can utilize the calendar name, maybe one category and one calendar. You can do something like that. If you want to ma uh, manage the time by different ca uh, calendar, you also can do that, right? So, I think that's almost it about this project. And uh, if you are interested uh, in the code, so of course this is should it should be posted to my GitHub as well. So for project ninety nine, and you also can check the code uh, in this editor for sure. Um, and I, I think I'm not going to explain this code uh, right now in this in this video. I'm going. I'm not. Uh, so basically, you ha uh, we have some utility functions in this uh, file index zero, and then we have some uh, main functions in this main uh, .js file, and uh, so all the functions you can see here open the sidebar and send the report. And then we have some trigger function for sending reports or uh, track the, or watch the calendar change, right? So this is about this main function, uh, main.js and we have an API.js file. So this is more for the sidebar to use, right? So when we are loading the sidebar, we are, we are going to call this API to get the application data, so we're calling we're calling this function and uh, when we're trying to save the changes, 
we're going to uh, call this uh, API added to tracker function and we are trying to reset everything we are going to disable we're going to call this API disable all calendars I think I renamed this a label a little bit for this uh, button caption so basically what they do uh, when we're trying to save the changes we're going to add this calendar and cre basically create some triggers for both the calendar and the reports so let me show you in the, in the triggers you can manually set this up right so we're trying to save here so in the settings here we have this work calendar and uh, Google App Script calendar and that's why we have two events or two triggers for uh, calendar change is going to trigger this function to, to do the update and uh, for the reports here we have a weekly, monthly, yearly and that's why we have three time-based trigger to do this weekly reports, monthly reports, and the yearly reports. So that's basically the the whole the whole structure for this application. And uh, there is a very interested uh, interesting topic in this project. I think is about how to how do we catch how do we catch the latest change from the in your calendar and only get that event and put it here so this is a very interesting uh, topic in app script so if you're interested you can check the code so you, you may be fine you, you can find how I did it uh, in this project and uh, I think that's going to be very valuable um, uh, uh, information or uh, knowledge to be to be mastered I think is is a very important a topic. If you can figure that out, it's going to be very useful. If you are if you are trying to do any project related to Google, Google Calendar, right? And um, I think that's it about this video and about this project. And uh, thank you. Bye bye.